All right, kind of a reaction video again. Can't respond to anybody because I don't like any of the people I'd have to respond to. At least I don't like them today. Uh, to be serious, made some video all kind of panicky about what the creationists are doing. Even though she is sort of a creationist, as she um, has maligned Darwinism and uh, called Darwin an you know, archaic theory. <laughs> but anyway... Um, <laughs> So anyway, she's all panicky because you know the creationists getting into this neuroscience kind of stuff, into you know brain stuff, and uh, making some kind of argument, kind of like Matt, which Matt sort of repeated the argument um, that somehow evolution just doesn't account for big human giant intelligence, <laughs> you know, that we're somehow special and magic and uh, can't be accounted for. And uh, it's just such nonsense. It's just so easy to defeat it. And uh, but I was really disappointed. I went listening to these five videos or so at the time that were response videos, and they all sucked. And that asshole voices in the head did one. The brain scientist, as he called himself once before. I guess he has a psychology degree, um, but he's an idiot. <laughs> You're really a big idiot. And he said a couple of things that were just so stupid. I mean, there's one point too where he's talking about. Um, you know how he, you know, lamenting a very disappointed kind of sounding voice. Well, we can't use monkeys for our experiments anymore. Um, and it just it was it was just you know, and and then he, he he sort of when he was talking about what part of our brain is makes us specially human, um, you know, he's implying as if other animals don't have consciousness that we're it we're the only animals with consciousness you know real consciousness only existing in human beings. And it's just so stupid. All right, so let's go through this again. I've been through this before, and we'll go through this motherfucking shit again. Um, most brains, mo most scientists, biologists, uh, whatever, I think they agree uh, that the genetics kind of demonstrate that uh, you know we acquired our intelligence a long time ago. That you could have extracted a a human brain from 70,000 years ago, or maybe even 150 or 200,000 years ago, and you could have put him in grammar school as a baby and taught him and educated him and he would have been doing just he'd do is just as well as we do okay he had the capacities that we have he just didn't have any knowledge base it took us a hundred thousand years to acquire an informed intelligence a knowledge base we couldn't use our intelligence because we just didn't have any knowledge to put in it and uh, so it's a very subtle change that took place in our brains that gave us a little bit at the time a little bit of an advantage in terms of our um, reasoning capacities um, because we really didn't have that much to do with it I mean so yeah we, we developed the point to your stick and rocks and bones and we did little things we were a little bit cleverer than a chimpanzee but just a little bit cleverer okay um, but the change that took place gave us a capacity to be a lot more clever and that's the the, the irony of it all is that nature thought it was giving us just a little bit of an advantage it, 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 it was rewarding a, a slight improvement in intelligence. Um, it had no idea we would build nuclear bombs with that slight improvement and perhaps blow ourselves up and demonstrate that, pff, well, evolution proves that intelligence not a good thing to have, <laughs> you know, maybe. And it looks like we're going to do that. It looks like we're pretty close to self-destructing. It seems pretty much inevitable. We haven't gotten past violence as a solution to problems. We're, 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 we are fucked. Um, in a lot of ways, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty narrow little little gap in the window that we can escape to survive you know to survive to a future. It's a really little um, there's not much room for error, okay, in in, in the course we chart. Um, so anyway, it's just it seems this is this is not that big a threat. I mean, anybody who thinks other animals are not conscious is insane. I mean, just imbecilically stupid let's put it that way so stupid you might as well call them insane um, I mean you see it we see it in, in, in there's even birds that uh, are pretty um, pretty capable pretty rationally capable um, but certainly the higher mammals are very reasonable they can reason problems out they can find solutions to their problems by thinking um, and all they lack, um, the, the key ingredient for us was this language thing. If we didn't have this language, we would be fucked. If you take language away from a human being, an experiment we don't do on purpose, but has happened accidentally, 
you're left with a, if you don't introduce it in, in their youth and their maturation they're not going to be able to acquire it. they're going to be they're going to stay conceptually limited they're not going to be able to understand the world we the way we understand it they're not going to be able to name everything and order everything and organize everything based on symbols and representations they're not going to be able to model the world inside their brain the way we are because we can label things we can identify them and uh, extract them when we need them and that way be able to communicate and uh, refine our understanding um, we can teach each other um, we can learn from each other more precisely um, so anyway, and then so how exactly the brain manifests consciousness is part of this equation. And there's nothing mysterious in my opinion about consciousness. I mean, yes, it's mysterious how this phenomenon takes place. I mean, it is some little, you know, we, how many neurons can we pull out of our brain be, and, until we lose consciousness? I mean, how, what's the minimum requirements for something called consciousness? It would be an interesting experiment to do, but obviously we can't do it. Um, uh, you know, not to a, a human being, but maybe somebody would volunteer. I don't know. Maybe we should let it happen if somebody will volunteer. Uh, you know, it's a, a brave and, and great human being that would do that. Um, but anyway, I, what we're made out of is two things, feel our consciousness, feelings and our intelligence. So let's just separate the intelligence because we kind of know the intelligence is just an add-on. Okay, the other animals have some intelligence and they have feelings. You can see the emotions. We can see them dream. There'd be no point in having dreams if you weren't learning from them or, or um, incorporating them through some conscious experience. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different kind of consciousness, but you're certainly, it's an awareness-like um, consciousness. And we see them experience it. So we can't, you know, there's no denying their consciousness and emotions. There's no denying their emotions. We see the fear that motivates them. We see the drives and desires and passions that motivate them. We see them go insane. You know, we see the panther pace the cage. We see them vulnerable to the same things we are vulnerable with our sophisticated consciousness. And all it is is they're dumb. That's all. They're just uneducatable. Okay? That doesn't mean they're not conscious. It's just it's this stupid equation. Um, and anyway, okay, so it's how these two things mix. I mean, look, we, the first sense organs, I mean, you have to look at how we, we probably evolved this awareness, and it was always to our advantage. It's to an organism's advantage to be able to interact with its environment in a more sophisticated and reasonable way, you know, in a way that's to its advantage. It's, it's to an organism's advantage to be able to learn from experience. These are obvious. And so obviously in our evolutionary history, in the evolution of animals, um, you know, it became, uh, there, was, there was value in sensing your position in the world, sensing your environment, sensing where you were, where the sun was. These things all became valuable things to be able to do. So organs slowly developed that were capable of doing those things. Um, incremental development. And then at some point, there was this advantage to centralizing the processing of this environmental circumstances. I mean, uh, if there's an attacker, I will shit on them. And that would be to my advantage to shit on my attacker. And so these, these organs and these reflexes became interconnected. And so we had the ability to sense something and then we had another part of that would create a reflexive reaction. And eventually those reflexes started to be turned into a feedback loop. So instead of causing an automatic reaction, they caused another sensation. And then that sensation combined with the first sensation would create another reflexive reaction that could be another feedback loop. And that could be in turn another feedback loop. And so it just I think it started with just this feedback loop. And so it became capable of looping a, a lot of reflexive reactions to different words, to different ideas, to different sounds, to whatever we could sense. And so in a sense, we create a third sense, I mean, another sense organ, a sixth sense, which was basically our own reflexes folded back on top of themselves in this feedback loop. And probably consciousness came somewhere in that process.